This is probably the youngest metal band in existence right now. They used to play in Times Square, and they blew up. Guys, go down the line and introduce yourselves, and uh, let's get let's get going. Yeah, grab a mic. Hello, I'm Jared. Hello, I'm Alec. I'm Malcolm Brickhouse. I'm Luke Meyer. And you play what instrument? <laughs> Drums. I play bass. Uh, guitar and vocals. I don't play anything. Yeah, you <laughs> you play the editor and the shooter and the director. Uh, Just how the did, director. Yeah. How did how did this documentary come to you? Uh, a year before we shot this film, we made a, a short documentary on the band that was um, it was for like an online uh, interview magazine, and it went in incredibly viral. It, like a million people watched it in a month when it first went live. It also played at South by last year, and um, we were I was introduced to the band by the magazine who had, who had found them and seen you guys play in Midtown. I think that's how they initially found you. And then they you know, they had a whole bunch of videos on YouTube of them playing, and I was shown them, and then I met them and shot the short. So you guys were playing uh, on the street in Times Square, getting a, getting a lot of attention for it. Where did that idea come from? You know, you started this band, you're young. Where did the idea come from to go to Times Square, sort of the center of New York City? Those people right there in the oh back yeah. of <laughs> <laughs> My mom and my dad, um, we, our first performance or show was at the Apollo Theater, it was amateur night, and once we won the first round, but lost the second round, and we wanted to keep this thing going. So uh, my, my mom and dad, the idea to um just perform in Times Square and get exposure like that. So you got some exposure. What was what was that like for you guys? What did that feel like? It was a new start of like my life and how I feel like my life is gonna like end up and where it's gonna go. I when we first did the Apollo Theater, it was like. Am I really here? That you know that type of moment, you know. And there was this incredible woman named Moses Harper, where she told us, "Perform as if this was your last night performing." And I took that into heart. And like Malcolm said, he still does. So, do you take that into heart now with with every performance? Do you go into every performance thinking that mantra? Uh, not that mantra necessarily, but I do take that into heart now, because. I have to think that, you know, whoever's in the crowd or who is in the crowd can help you. You never know. There could be anybody in the crowd that wants to, you know, help you in many different ways. So, At, at this point, with uh, the success, the viral videos being so successful, making a documentary, you guys performed at Coachella, right? Have yeah. you met a, a number of your heroes at this point? Uh, yeah, we met Metallica. <laughs> Guns N' Roses. Yes, um, Slash. Um. What is that? What, what 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 is that like? Because you're not, they're not oh, meeting Motorhead. you. They're not meeting you the way that I would Marilyn meet them Manson. at your age, which is like, I'm a fan. Hello, I love your music. They're, you're musicians. You're playing the stage with them. Uh, it's you know, it's not overwhelming as you would expect it to be. It, it's quite normal as you would be meeting a normal person because you know, just normal. Yeah. You guys handle fame pretty well. It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna be good at being famous. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so, 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 Luke, you, you, you start shooting this documentary. Talk to me about the, the, the narrative of the documentary, sort of the beginning, where you're following them from the beginning to the end. Um, well, the, the, the full-length documentary actually starts with some of the footage from the short. So it starts, with, starts in the time period before, be, you know, before you guys started to have really major exposure. And then it moves on ahead until when they, they sign a record deal with, with Sony music and um, it's like a whole wild year that they had last year with you just listed some of it with Coachella and coming here and Warp Tour um, and then in the midst of that because you guys are minors you had to they had to they had to file their um, their contract with the courts and that became news in the middle of the summer which was it was a major explosion for of more exposure for you guys how how sh how shielded do you guys feel from stuff like that? That as minors you have to sign contracts through the courts. Like it's all in the documentary, but uh, you know I'm wondering how how much you guys are actually aware of stuff like that. Oh, uh, we're very aware that we can't do certain things because we're minors. You know, sometimes we forget, we become forgetful. But at the end of the day, we still know our place as you know minors. As, te as teenagers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how. How did metal come to you? Well, um, I used to watch Japanese animated 
shows and wrestling and like the music in there was metal. So um, I went online, looked at some bands, and I really liked that kind of music. And I went to my first metal show, and like who was it? Oh, Disturbed. And and at that show, I realized that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So. And did you did did you guys already play, or did he talk you in? Did he rope you into it? Oh, I was there at the Disturbed concert. You were at the Disturbed concert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just went to sleep at like a half of the show. <laughs> How old were you? I was like, what, six years old? Yeah, seven? Seven. Yeah. Oh so you got tired? Yeah. I had a trip the next day. I watched the whole at thing. At school. How about you, Alan? <laughs> have you, have, have, does Disturb know that they're uh, one of your big, biggest influences? Yeah, yes. we, we work with their first, pro- well, the. Yeah, their first producer. Yeah, they, yeah they're, 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 their first producer was our first producer, too. And he let us speak to the, the guitarist and the band Dan Donegan. So he knows about us. Yes. That must have been pretty big, right? Yes. Yeah. It was a very exciting moment. What do you guys, you know, you're you're super young right now. You're in a major label signed metal band. What are you hoping to accomplish? Well, hopefully we'll be able to tour all over the world and get this album released as quick as possible. And that's our goal that is standing right now. Well, about the record deal. We, our attorneys are finding a way for us to exit Sony. So, yeah, things are just complicated right now. So, we have to leave Sony. You're, how old are you again? 13. 14. And he just told everybody that his attorneys were finding a way for him to exit Sony. I don't think I would have known what that meant up until five years ago when I was like 24, 25 years old. And it still wouldn't have applied to me. (laughs) Uh. Feel, does it feel like a wild life? Yes, I, I'm shortly but uh, gradually figuring out the business side of this. Is it, dis- is it disheartening to figure out the business side of it? No. Mm-hmm. no. Some, sometimes. Because there's yeah. always other options. Everything happens for a reason. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> he, does not, he does not agree. I'm not gonna. Speak I mean, Sony that. was very great for us, but you know, things didn't just work out. So yeah, complications happen. Yeah, uh, yeah, a- absolutely. But I'm just, uh, you know, without even talking about Sony, I think the more the idea that you know, music is, is such a passionate thing. It comes from the heart. It comes from your inspirations. The you know, you were six years old when you saw your first Disturbed concert. You guys are playing in Times Square. You're getting noticed, and now at this point, all of this amazing stuff happens, and you get and you realize that your attorneys have to do this, and there's that there's this business side to it. Does that feel like it slows you down at all? No. Well, this process exactly, um, us exiting Sony is slowing down because we had plans to release this album way earlier and those plans just kept being pushed back because of this business side that you're talking about, the attorneys and lawyers and all that. Well, look, I mean, what's that like for you? You're documenting this and you're documenting 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds dealing with the business side of this industry, which... I mean, artists much older than them have come have been like, yeah, it eats you alive. <laughs> it's it's raw. Well, it's, it's a lot of what the film is about. It's about them. I mean, right. everyone who gets involved in the entertainment industry has a, a an initial period of, un, of of getting introduced to it and learning about how it works. Most people enter it as adults, and so they have some pre understanding of it. Though it's a lot more, a lot deeper than you guys have, I think, or had. You're learning now. Right, um, yeah. mm-hmm. and so it was like it was the whole thing was new in a, in a in a very dramatic way for you guys, I think. Yeah, the the film actually gives you a visual of happens behind the scenes. Like, so many people have been asking about our album, and it's like we want to tell them what's going on, but we can't. But the documentary action actually gave them a visual of what's going on and why we can't do the things that we can do or we can't do because of that. You know. What's the, uh, I'm curious what the, the, best, the best show, the biggest crowd that you guys have played for so far? I would say maybe Coachella. Or Heavy Montreal or Coachella, one of those two. One of those two? Yeah. How does the crowd generally re- respond to, to you guys? How do you feel like they respond? Depends uh, on the act we're opening yeah, for. It, de- it depends on the show and <laughs> it depends on who's opening. All right. You're going to run the show, clearly. <laughs> you got the practical yeah. business side of the band. Right. But, you uh, know. A, a good show would be like, like them jumping up and down and mosh pits and stuff like that. Right. And like a okay show 
would be like, I don't know. What Marilyn Manson. Well, Mar- Marilyn Mar- Manson Mar- was a great yeah. show. It, it was, was a, show. it was a wonderful show. You guys open for Marilyn Manson? Yeah. Yeah. We had a That's amazing. Days. But like what we're trying to say is that the crowd is mature. So things yeah. that you want them to do probably not is going to happen. Oh, they're a little older. The Marilyn Manson fans are yeah, a little bit yeah. older. They're kind of hanging back and watching it. Right. Have you guys ever been in a mosh pit? No. A no, I've been in a circle a pit. I've been in a mosh pit, which I never want to be in one. Never want to be in a mosh no. pit? <laughs> Do you guys tell your audience no mosh? Like no, some bands oh, get no. up and they say, guys, no moshing. It's, it's oh, unsafe for people. I promote it. You promote it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm 13. Carnage. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys crowd surf a lot, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I guess that's a way of well, us not, not, not doing all something. No, only I, Malcolm. Only me. Only you guys don't yeah. crowd surf? I did no. it a few times. Did you like it? it, it it's weird. Like, I like it. Yeah. Like Especially <laughs> the part when I'm about to fall. That's the part that you like? Yeah, it's scary. <laughs> I've done it once or twice. It was terrifying. I hated it. You do all it backwards right. or like? Yeah, like, like this. Well, why would you do it that way? You know, you don't know if you're gonna hit your head or not. But then, if you if they almost drop you, you're not gonna know where to find the next person. Yep. You have to go forward, and then if someone try to drop you, you could jump onto somebody. Then I guess I did it wrong. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know how to crowd surf. <laughs> uh, let's let's open up for some questions. See if anybody has any questions for the for the for the guys out here. Anybody have any questions that they wanna pose to uh to the band to unlocking the truth? Uh, wait for a microphone if you guys have a question. It doesn't look like they, uh, uh, no <laughs> they're 13-year-old metalheads here, guys. Come on. No questions. Um, no questions. I, I'm curious. What did your parents think when, you know, I mean, before the Apollo, they, they saw you getting into metal. You know, how did they, how did they nurture this? How did, wh- did you tell them that this is what you were into and they got you a guitar? Explain that again. Oh, that was very... When, you're, when your parents saw that you were getting into, into metal... Okay, uh, they, they they were fine. They it was uh, they they were, they were okay about it. Um, they did a manager right now, so I'm, they're okay. They're about real it. happy about it. <laughs> yeah, very fair. They they my mom was like, "Don't don't play that killing your mama music," but that's she's. I think she's okay with it now. She's uh, my mom was like, she was very sentimental about it. She did not want me to do it at first. She told me when I was at home, she was like, you will not be playing no heavy metal music. You'll be playing strictly gospel. And that she loves gospel. So I was like, oh, God. So <laughs> some way, somehow, I got my way into it. And yeah. When did that, when did, did it ever change for her? She realized that metal was a good thing for you? Yeah. Because she didn't want me hanging out with the people around my, my neighborhood. Yeah, that's the word, neighborhood. What neighborhood are you guys from, live in? I'm from Bedford Stuyvesant. I'm from Crown Heights, Flatbush. So, like around, I'm from Brooklyn, so like not far from each other. How did you guys meet? I met, well, I met Malcolm at preschool. Okay. I met Malcolm by my godmother, Denise. And Denise. they met at, at one of my birthday parties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At that too. Like ki- this is like a, like kids do birthday yeah. parties, preschool <laughs> through yep. godmothers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chance encounters. <laughs> Look, what what have you been most surprised about in documenting uh, their their story? To think about that a minute. Um, most surprised, I think. Uh, I think it, a lot of it. Probably the most surprising part was just all the things that keep happening to you guys. Like it, as we went through the year of filming, it, there was. Every time you thought you got to the point that was like, that's the big thing that happens, there'd be another one and another one. And you guys, and how you guys weathered it all, I think is, was also surprising because it's, it's, you know, that's, it's big deal stuff that is huge for anyone to go through, but you guys are so young. And yeah, you seem extremely yeah. level-headed for, for your age. Mm-hmm. You, what were you able to handle? Like, you know, when we, we, you're, you're talking about some of the problems that you had with the label... Were you guys able to handle that? And were you mature about it, or did you still did you feel like you may have been acting like a thirteen year old about it? No, no, no. I, I sometimes I get stressed a lot. No, not a lot. Sometimes. Sure. Uh, but but besides that, uh, I guess that's that's the managers. That's not me. So 
<laughs> I'm creative, basically. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I just I make mean, music. Any artist should want to find out what's going on behind the scenes because probably, like, say, anybody in this crowd would say, I heard you guys are performing this place, and we're like, I don't know, I guess. Yeah. You know, it's always good to find out what's going on behind the scenes. But uh, like you said, that's management there, you know. We just do what we have to do, and we just roll with the plan. How have people in uh, in school responded to all the success? How do they how do they talk to you about it? Oh, they don't they don't really think much of it because really? the my friends because I because I'm in middle school, my friends have watched me get bigger and bigger. So I st I only hang out with the friends that knew me before. I don't like try to make new friends because then I don't know if they're fake or not. So yeah, that's where I'm at. I try to keep my circle as far as school. But the, but even the friends before that watched you get bigger. What was that? What was that like? You know, you you maybe go on tour, you go to Coachella, and then you'd go home back to the middle school. Uh, they just they, they just say, Alec, where did you go? And then I'll tell them. They're like <laughs> they're like you have what schoolwork to catch up on and stuff. Like our mi our middle school is just perpetually unimpressed. What yeah. like, what's the deal? <laughs> well, the floor that me and Alec is on is like the arts floor, so it's like everybody's talented. So, I mean, people yeah, are people. like not going to be impressed with what you do. It's just that, oh, you're talented. Okay. You know. It's either they don't like you or they're jealous or they don't care at all. Which so do you prefer? Them, them not to care at all. <laughs> Open I, up. Oh, go I ahead, that people, Kids at school were kind of impressed when you guys would end up on TV. Like telling them that you were at a show. old school. It's yeah. seventh grade. Yeah. Yeah. Only when there's cameras around. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I Big mean, you made me look impressive at my school. Yeah. <laughs> if you had little cameras, they wouldn't mind. But big cameras look like like television. I mean, come on. Who wouldn't want to be in a the camera? They want to say hello to their mother. And once you leave, I'm, I'm like a loser again. <laughs> Dad's mad. Dad. No idea why you're saying that. Dad, he's modest. He's at the very least modest. Yeah. <laughs> Let's open it up for uh, questions one more time, see if anybody has any uh, any questions around here. Guys? Yeah, that one. Right here? Yes. Right back here? There's a mic coming over to you. She's getting through the crowd, moving around a chair, handing it off. The there we go. Here. So there are bands that are like 20 years your senior that are trying to use social media to tap into kids your age. They're trying to market to an audience your age and trying to reach you a group, your audience. How do you use social media and um, social networking to reach your fans at well, your we, age? Well, we try to, you know, um, go about it as reaching out to all age groups because at the end of the day, the more fans, the better. And, you know, we play music that anyone can enjoy, kids, you know, old people, young people, mid people in their mid-20s, you know. We just try to keep it level, you know. We don't market it a certain way. We just market it in a broad manner so, you know, we can get as much fans as possible. Instagram. Oh, Instagram. Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, Instagram yeah. and Facebook. Like, um, I try to, like, make many posts in one day. I mean, well, not in one day, but, like, many posts as I can in a day. Like, whenever I'm around them or, like, whenever I see something attracting and funny, you know, on, like, my everyday life or, you know, with the band. I try to do that so like people could see what goes on in my personal life and there's a lot of times where I I have friends, you know, but there's a lot of times where my friends think that I don't have my childhood anymore. So basically that shows that I still have my life and I get to do what I want to do when I have the time to do it. People don't think you have a childhood anymore? Nope. What <laughs> how does that how, how how what do people say to you? They'd be like, oh, my God, since you're so famous, you don't hang out with us anymore. You're an adult. Fact. <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> act like, like I'm Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't go to my old school because I don't like them. They act like I'm, I don't go there because I think I'm too good. No, I just don't like you people. <laughs> <laughs> Again, mom and dad are not pleased with that. <laughs> They're about ready to pull the plug. <laughs> pull the plug. So, do you, but you feel like you have a childhood and that everything's, this is exactly what you want to be doing at your age. Yes. 
everything's fine, but you know, this is for our future, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're gonna grow up eventually, and you know, we're doing this so we could be stable as adults, and we could, you know, live the American dream, you know, live the life that everyone wants to live. Right. You know? When I become of age, I will be able to buy all the cars that I want in the <laughs> house, and still make music for my fans. When you guys were playing in Times Square, what was the cra- who was the craziest person that you met? Oh my God! Okay, um, it was this guy. He was a contractor. He was a so-called contractor. He can get assigned to everybody. He was like, "I can get you signed by Wednesday. Uh, any label you want: Sony, Fearless Records. Uh, what was it? Everybody. Yeah, everybody. everybody. And that, that was so funny because nothing happened. So did you did you know that <laughs> did you know that he was full of it when you when he when he first yeah. approached you? Yeah. No, I I, I th- no I, I didn't. I just I, I thought you were I was gonna, ready I, to get I, signed. Yeah. <laughs> But then I realized mm, nothing was going to happen. Yeah, what? he's like, I w- I'm going to call my guy Johnny right now, tell him to write up a contract. He's drinking <laughs> a beer at the bar right now. He's going to get down here and get you a contract. I was like, really? Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I All right. <laughs> so when's, th- when's the next show, guys? When are you playing next? Tomorrow at the McDonald's, McDonald's stage, stage, 2 o'clock to 2.30. All right. PM. So if you guys are here, well, is there any more questions before we before we wrap it up? Yes, please, questions. I don't. They love questions you. right here, right in the front. Yo, Alan. Oh yeah, thank you, Alan. Why would, you ask that? <laughs> Why would you ask that question? You already know the answer. They don't know. They don't know. It comes out May fifth, and it's on fifth, iTunes. Fifth? Pre-order it. Teams? We really appreciate it if you 15. do. It's a good memoir. It was uh, published by Penguin. You know that's a good company. So yeah. <laughs> Plug the company, not the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thanks so much. Do we have any, any, any more questions before we wrap it up? No? No? Oh, I thought I saw a mic in her hand. Oh, no. No? All right. Well, guys, thanks so much. Congratulations on all the success. Luke, congratulations on the film. All right, thanks. All right. Thank thank you. you guys are pumped to be here. And, Bye-bye. guys, that does it for uh, Build at the South by Southwest uh, Interactive Film and Music Festival. Thanks so much for thank watching. Thank you.